creeds and modes and doctrines of men and free from all of those versions and ideas and opinions of them that have kept you shut up in superstition until now. Same as it was in the days of Jesus in the sonship degree. When they say Jesus was a man goodness, a friend of publicans and sinners. Yet John did not come eating and drinking as Jesus did. But Jesus came both eating and drinking. When they called John one who had the other self, because he came neither eating nor drinking. But Jesus came both eating and drinking. And to say he was a man gladness, a wine peddler, and a friend of publicans and sinners. But if you learn the truth concerning this mystery, you are free from all versions and ideas and opinions of men in reference to eating and drinking. On one occasion, I say such kind cometh out with fasting and with prayer. But what are you to fast from? You are to fast from prejudice, fast from strife, fast from bigotry, fast from division and inequality, fast from all of those mental and spiritual characteristics that have kept the people divided. But as far as fasting from material food, you need not fast from any material food that is for the sustenance of your body. For I did say, it is a blessing to one, yea, everyone that cometh eating and giving thanks. For oh, in everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. So then, so then I say it's a privilege to live in such a recognition and to build upon such a foundation as this one, being free from all the mortal versions of superstition and the ideas and opinions of man. For they have been imposed upon you until the time of reformation. Not only until the time of reformation, but since this is the time of resurrection, those carnal ordinances and versions and ideas and rituals of men have no longer access within. Aren't you glad? <laughs> These thoughts should be stamped in your memory once and forever. For there are those who do think on and teach different creeds and different carnal ordinances imposed upon them until they be resurrected or awaken with the Spirit of God from on high. When this is done, you will no longer be subject to those carnal ordinances and carnal versions, carnal ideas and opinions. For to him that is natural, all things are natural. But to him that is spiritual, all things are spiritual. We are happy to present to you and to the world at large the reality of the actual presence of God transforming, changing, and resurrecting you from the dead work of materialism and mortality to true spirituality. Yeah. Aren't you glad? <laughs> when you lived in those things, you were subject to death and subject to 
disappoint that. You were subject to failure. For in Adam all die, but so shall in Jesus Christ all be made alive. I further say, John declares he must decrease, but one cometh after him, who he shall increase. John's doctrine must decrease, and all of them's doctrine must decrease. But my doctrine is from everlasting to everlasting, <laughs> without the beginning of days and without the end of life. <laughs> Truly might have John, John the Revelator caught the glimpse of the mystery in his revelationic prediction of his revelation and said he saw a new heaven and a new earth for the first heaven and the first earth are passed away. You see, the first one is passing away. <laughs> and you'll not see the mystery. The first version of men, the first vision of men and their revelation and their concept concerning that imaginary heaven. Those things are passing away and the consciousness of God's presence is coming into being and God himself shall be with them, he declared, and shall be their God and they shall be his people. <laughs> then, as I say, the very first imaginary heaven, with all of its imaginary glory, with all of its imaginary grandeur, somewhere in the supposition of heaven, that imaginary heaven is passing away. <laughs> And I, John, declare, he saw a new heaven and a new earth coming down from that imaginary heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. <laughs> the imaginations of men have shaped and fashioned and formed for them a heaven far above the sky. And says the sky is nowhere and is nothing, but everywhere where there is nothing upward. I do play. <laughs> Therefore, as they have shaped and fashioned for themselves in their superstitious imagination, a heaven. And that imagination. I am working cancellation and dispellation on that imaginary heaven, for that is the way it happens. <laughs> Aren't you glad? It's a privilege to realize all of that imaginary heaven. Heaven of your so-called mothers and fathers, as they taught you, was imaginary heaven, was not a reality, was far above all of the planets and stars, far above all of the suns and the moon, yet it was far above all of the sky. And yet it was such an imagination, you were in that delusion until you were awakened out of that imaginary concept of heaven and came to the conscious realization of the new heaven and the new earth that shall dwell with men. <laughs> Now, 
sin, I say, and transform in the matter to the spiritual. In other words, God is making material things spiritual, and the spiritual things material. God is bringing into materialization and into outer expression your fondest imagination where you will no longer suppositionally discern the heaven above the sky. Aren't you glad? Where you will bring down into your consciousness of God's presence and among yourselves the reality of that heaven that was coming down from God, from that imaginary God, out of heaven, out of that imaginary heaven, to the place of your boy. I say in the sun typically, he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. Say the kingdom of God is within you. That's the privilege to realize the kingdom is not someplace far above the sky, but the kingdom of God is within. One writer declares on another occasion, the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but is righteousness, joy, and peace in the Holy Ghost. These attributes of God are producible and reincarnatable, repersonifiable and realizable. Because righteousness, joy, and peace in the Holy Ghost, all of these attributes and characteristics that he was the life of God himself, they are all materializable personifiable and personifiable and you are to personify these qualities of God's attributes and characteristics and make them visible no longer supposition they discern but make them visible in your very being <laughs> This does not come by fasting from material food, fasting from the food that is called the sustenance of your body. It does not come by so doing. It comes by fasting from all spite, from all prejudice, from all division, from all racism from all inequality, from all bitterness, and from all of those detestable tendencies created within you. So you have been living on them from your infancy. If you will stop now and pass from those tendencies, you will be passing the kind of path that God is speaking about. <laughs> First time coming out with fasting and the prayer. Aren't you blessed? Some have said, Father, I have thought this. I have thought that. I have thought the other. And I have been in glory internally or mentally in my subconsciousness through my dreams and visions and the like. I have said that such kind will come out with fasting and with prayer by fasting from doing those things that those tendencies created within you will suggest for you to do and you're not see the best dress. By fasting from them persistently, consciously, and sincerely you will overcome them 
but they will come out with persistent passion and prayer. Aren't you glad? <laughs> Therefore, it's a blessing to know what passion means. And what I was speaking of when I say scripture that yes, you should fast. You should fast from all of your heredity tendencies. All of the mortal passions and mortal pleasures. You should fast from all of your prenatal influences and live in the presence of God in consciousness. And those things will come out while you pass them from them with a desire to overcome the wicked one. <laughs> prayer. Now what is prayer? Prayer is not a multitude of words. Prayer is the heart sincere desire. Another and unexpressed with a sincere desire and passion to overcome in a detestable tendency, even though it has been prenatal within you, having a sincere desire to overcome those tendencies within you, and by obtaining from the suggestions and tendencies that they may lead you to do a thing. Refuse to obey those tendencies. You are passing and praying. And you're not to miss that. No such a thing as getting down, going to a performance of prayer after the manner of men. Oh, I did say, you know not how to pray as you are. But the Spirit itself makes its intersection in groanings which cannot be uttered. For he that searches the heart knows what is the mind of the Spirit. For he makes his intersection for the saints according to the will of God. So then I say it's a privilege, and a privilege beyond a limitation, beyond all barriers of all superstition, to live in such a recognition and to build upon such a foundation as this one, and realize when you are passing from those detestable tendencies, characteristics, ideas, and opinions, and passing from all of your mortal and carnal tendencies by refusing to obey them though they are within you. You are passing the kind of path that I, God, was telling you. This is God's administration. And I'm reigning now. Aren't you glad? No doctrines of men or dogmas from any individual or from anyone can change the doctrine of God in this, his administration. For God is reigning and having his own way. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. There is no other path to pass through but from your human tendencies, passes and pleasures, your prenatal influences and your characteristics, your disposition and all of your hereditation and be new creatures. For I did say, Nicodemus, you must be born again. <laughs> so long as you live in your human tendencies, human passes, or human pleasures, so long as you are influenced by hereditation, or 
preconceived ideas and opinions, you are influenced by the moral version, and you are made subject to corruption. Oh, I will not be misled. And I say, live in this recognition, and I will lift you above barriers and limitations. For God is omnipotent, omniscient, and omnipresent. And yet, in all of His majesty, dominion, and authority, God is here and ever present. <laughs> consideration and live in this recognition for truly your ideas and your opinion even when you are free from sin and from sin you can live in the ideas and the opinions and the versions of others and you have made yourselves subject to corruption by living in the ideas and the opinions of others, though you may not even be standing. Can you not see the mystery? Same as I've had many to come to me and say, Father, I'm living the best I can. I'm not standing there. I know I'm not doing anything that is contrary to your teachings or contrary to the Bible. And yet I am sick and sickly. I'm having aches and pains. I am having disappointment and failure. I say you may not be sinning personally or individually, but you are living in the atmosphere of sin and corruption and the germs of those contagious germs, those diseases that are in the atmosphere in which you are living. They have affected your physical bodies by the influences they have over you. They can influence you to do what someone else would do. And what others do do, that are living in mortal consciousness, you have made yourselves subject to the corruption of those who are corrupted thereby. And the germs of those who are living in that state of consciousness will be affected and contagious to you and to others because they are by nature contagious. How can those things be some they say? I'm not touching anyone with a contagious disease. They may say I'm not physically or personally in their presence. But if you are mentally and spiritually in the presence of those with the contagion, you have made yourselves subject to the contagion that they carry in themselves where the physical contagions are mental contagions. See the mystery? I'm sick. I, I seem like I'm kind of this well. And I know I'm not standing there. If you live in racist streets and colors, if you live in families or any other, you have made yourself subject to their infirmities, their sickness, and their diseases that they are carrying in their physical bodies. Aren't you glad? I know you're glad to know that. So that you will let go by passing out of your system 
all of those preconceived ideas and opinions. And the ideas and opinions of others who have carried a contagion. See the mystery. They are sick and they and they are dying. Some are not sinning and dying. Maybe they are not sinning, but they are dying because they live in that state of consciousness that is infected in itself by the contagion of those germs of diseases that are manifested physically in the physical bodies of the children of men. Take these thoughts to consideration. Talking about fasting from food that is for the sustenance of your body, for your comfort, and for your convenience. And not fasting from those preconceived ideas and opinions. Not fasting from heritative fasts, pleasures, and tendencies. And all of those carry the very germs of your ancestors if you are carrying the characteristics and nature and disposition. If you are carrying the ideas and the opinions of them, your bodies will pay for it. You may not be affected physically, presently, or at present together with the contagious germs of disease that your fathers and mothers died with. But if you carry their characteristics and their disposition, their fantasies and their tendencies and their pleasures, in your body you will conceive the same term and will be affected by <laughs> now if there be any critic under the sound of my voice tell them that this is MSD <laughs> of doing that are not at all times a crime. But those things that those who do those things in vice and crime, they carry the germ of the crime in the habit or custom of doing those things. Can you not see the mystery? They are both passed from those things by refusing to harmonize with them, or sympathize with them, or compromise with them, by refusing to be a partaker of them mentally and spiritually. For oh, I say, wherefore, dear beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh. And third, and I say, cleanse yourself from all filthiness of the mind. <laughs> it is written of me, he shall purify the sons of Levi, and shall praise them as silver and as gold are purged. I'm purifying and purging you now. I'm purging your vocabulary. I'm purging your subconsciousness. I'm purifying your vocabulary and your subconsciousness. And even in your dreams, in the future as you are purged completely, you will not even think subconsciously in your dreams in our vicinity. 
and you will not think vulgarly. Cause I'm purging you now. I came among you to purge you of all of those detestable hereditary tendencies, fantasies and pleasures, and to purge you from all of your subconscious characteristics and dispositions to make you new creatures in reality so that you might have the victory over death, the other place, and the grave. I continue to tell you from time to time, I'm purging your vocabulary. I'm purging your subconscious mind as well as your conscious mind. Your conscious mind may be purged by education. You see the mystery? But I'm purging your subconscious mind as well as your conscious mind so that you might be able to offer unto the Lord and offer it in righteousness as in former years and as in the days of old. In the days of old, they offered unto the Lord an offering in righteousness because they offered unto the Lord themselves. And Paul caught a glimpse of the mystery of this great significant issue and said, I beseech ye, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies as living sacrifices, holy, which is your reasonable service, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. They are both pure bodies, free from all self-indulgence, free from all human tendencies, human fancies and pleasures, and free from that Adamic state of consciousness, you should offer unto the Lord a spotless body, pure and clean. <laughs> then I say you are doing a work that is a work that could not be condemned. Can you not see the mystery? For well, it's a work of righteousness being done by the Spirit. For he shall purify unto himself a glorious church without spot and without wrinkle. <laughs> then I say, stress these thoughts in your memory and learn from now more stressfully how you should fast. Pass from all of those ideas and opinions and the versions and passes and pleasures of men. Pass from all of the doctrines of men and all of their ideas and opinions. For I am within to say I thank you. Thank you.